Welcome to another episode of Two Minutes to Review. It's Matt. And it's Zach. This is our album review show. We do some new albums, mostly new albums, do some old albums. This time, this is another one of those albums that you could probably say is one of the most highly anticipated albums of 2021. And probably, Zach, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been quite some time since they've released another album. So this has been yeah. like... Well, you click the picture. Why am I even building this up? It is the brand new album from Mastodon. Yeah, but you know what? What makes Hushed and Grim a little bit more special? I mean, first off, anything from Mastodon is special. Let's just get it out there. But what makes Hushed and Grim a little more special than the rest of the albums? Well, not only is it a double album, but it's also an album written in tribute to their manager, Nick John. Now, if you recall, when we were discussing the coolest releases from Record Store Day a few years ago, uh, Mastodon actually released a final single of their cover of Stairway to Heaven, which they did in honor of Nick John, who passed away around that time. And anyone who knows the band knows how influential Nick was on them, both as a manager and as a friend. And it was a major loss for them. And on top of that, as they were already trying to go through that grieving process, uh, and the band would be the first to admit it, they were caught up in the pandemic and felt even more lost. And just a lot of emotion went into this album for the mind frame wise. And uh, I don't want to give too much away from my review, but it definitely made for a more interesting album to at least a more enticing album for everyone to want to listen to and gave more meaning, I guess is a good way to say it. So I, I was definitely excited to hear new Mastodon material. Matt, I know you were as well. Yep. Uh, I know we want to get into our review, but we want to first give a very, very special shout out to Rootless Coffee Co. They produce some really exciting, interesting blends, and they also collaborate with a lot of cool brands, artists, wrestlers, podcasts, even us. That's right. You know, we've been plugging away on our social media how every celebrity you can imagine has been just enjoying a cup of our epic footnote roast. I still can't believe that we actually have our own blend. It's all possible because of Rootless. So go to rootlesscoffee.com, place an order for your epic footnote roast. And if you want to try some of their own blends, well, guess what? You use the code epic roast. You can get 15% off of your whole order. And if you buy a bag of ours, you'll actually support us directly. Matthew, I yes. know this is going to shock you. You want me to go first? Okay. No, I want to go first. I know it's shocking. Do you do you want to go first? No, 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 no. You can go first. Well, thank you. You're such a gentleman. You diva. <laughs> Three. Yeah, me down. Two. Once more around the sun, go. So if your favorite mass on album is Leviathan, sorry, this album's not going to be for you. But then again, if you've stuck around with the band for the past 10 plus years. You know, you probably already appreciate how they've really evolved their aggressive sound into a more prog rock direction. And guess what? You're going to love this album if that's the case. In fact, I'm going to make a bold claim and say that this is Mastodon's most mature and confident sounding album to date. Uh, there's even, a, you know, a little bit of a Soundgarden and Alice in Chains vibe going on there with a hint of Led Zeppelin even. I mean, it's just, you hear songs like Sickle and Peace, Peace and Tranquility and Tear Drinker. And it just really captures how well the band has evolved over time. But to me, what really makes this album special, and it was I like talked about it a little bit before, is just the lyrical aspect of the album, how it really chronicles the pain, grief, and even confusion that comes from losing someone really important in your life. Uh, as I mentioned, in this case, Nick John. And, and when you hear Troy sing uh, lyrics like, leaving you behind is the hardest thing I've done uh, during the Bridge of Tear Drinker. I mean, it's just, it made me kind of tear up. And the whole album really just is a great uh, storytelling of the whole process of grief from starting with feeling the confusion. And then as you go on through the trip, you kind of ex gain the acceptance. I mean, there's this, just, um, this blessing in the Jewish culture that really means a lot to me called may their memory be a blessing, which basically reminds us to cherish all the incredible moments and accomplishments that you shared with the deceased. And you, you look, you listen to the lyric at the uh, last song, uh, Gigantium, um, Gigantium. Yeah, sorry, I mispronounced it. Uh, the lyric says, uh, my love so strong, the mounds we made in the distance, those will stay with us. And it's just really at its core, this album is not only a great tribute to 
their fallen manager, but it really captures how, you know, well Mastodon has just grown both musically and personally, which really is the most beautiful tribute they could pay to Nick John, given how large of a role he's played in it. So really a great album if you love Mastodon. Time is locked in, and out of five stars, your rating would be? I'm going to give it a four and a half. I was really impressed. Even as they evolve further away from their sound, there's still something about it that's Mastodon. And when we were discussing the three best grunge albums, how an album like Super Unknown, that that was their mature album. I really feel like this is Mastodon's mature album. They've done some really great albums before, but you can tell that they were still trying to find themselves they're still trying to find their voice. I think it's funny how this is a band that for a long time really did not have a solid singer. Everyone kind of contributed in a way, but they really, they started off with someone singing and then he left after the EPs. And then, so they've been really kind of singerless this whole time. And I feel like the, the last few years have found both Troy and Bran really stepping up to the plate and just really fine tuning their voices. Uh, and Brent has always had a great fun voice too, but he's actually, I think, sang less on this album than normal, uh, unless if I just misheard. But I mean, this album really is a confident mass on that's they've gone many years of just figuring out what they want to sound like, figuring out how can they add in a little bit more rock as opposed to just the in your face screaming metal. And this album, I feel like they found it and they really succeeded. Okay. Well, I so got some feelings my, too. Oh. I have a feeling that we're going to conflict on some things. Well, you'll find out as soon as you count me down. Well, here we go. Three, two, one, go. So there are very few albums that when they come out of the gate and you hear the very first note on them, you realize that you're going to be in for something special. And Hushed and Grimm is really that. Uh, the album feels like Mastodon has taken everything that they've learned over their entire music catalog and boiled it down to the most important elements. And it feels like every single note on here means something and there's nothing that's been rehashed or that's really stale on this album. And from the opening drum solo on Pain with an Anchor, they really take you on this musical journey from larger than life tracks, including the opening track to Tear Drinker and Gigantum, uh, to a really truly haunting track on Skeleton of Splendor, uh, Had It All, and down to just slower ballads that Mastodon, you know, I wasn't really great on, like big on in the past, but. With this album, they really do some great things on tracks like Gobblers of Dregs and Eyes um, Eyes and Downright. And they also have like just downright thrashers on this album, like Pushing the Tides. And Mastodon, usually, they sound great when it comes to production. And I hate to keep like just ringing in its bell, but on Hushed and Grim, dare I say this is kind of close to a perfect mix there's really nothing in here that gets lost or muddied and it, it, they sing with something greater than the sum of their parts and a track like the beast is really a great example of how well this album is actually mixed and even dare i say that i found a pinch of country twang inside of the beast as well but all of this still keeps true to who Mastodon is as a band and continues to grow and evolve into. Time's locked in. And before I ask for your star uh, ranking, I do want to note two things that you said perfectly about this album. One, how every note on this record serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so true. And for a double album, to be able to say that about double album is extraordinary. Yeah, there's a lot of music on this album, and you're getting 15 tracks of Mastodon. And for who Mastodon is as a band, you know that they can produce some long songs. They can produce some very intricate songs. And for 15 tracks of Mastodon music to have every note mean something and nothing feel like it's being drawn out just for the sake of playing says a lot. They really found their voice on this record. and. I think I have a hunch as to what your star ranking is going to be. But out of five stars, what are you going to give this? For the way that this album hit me, 
like just the very first track, Pain with an Anchor, it feels different. It's on another level. And normally it takes a lot for me to get to a five star. And I think this is a five star album. Wow. The last yeah, album not- that I gave this ranking to was Gojira, I believe. I'll have to check the records on that one. And it's funny because I feel like Gojira and Mastodon have a lot of similar traits. You can, I mean, whenever they tour together, it's a perfect combo. And I feel like, well, Gojira, they definitely incorporate a little bit more of rock elements on Amazonia. I feel as though, well, you know, Gojira is still going for the more like heavy, brutal sound or, uh, you know, just taking up like being the kings of metal. Mastodon are making more and more steps towards being a hard rock band, but still somehow capturing that intensity. They're like they're letting Gojira almost become the next Slayer, whereas they want Mastodon wants to become the next Alice in Chains. Like I really got a lot of Soundgarden and Alice in Chains vibes from this album in the best way possible. And granted, the fact that Kim from Soundgarden plays a guitar solo on this record. Uh, you know, no coincidence, I feel like. Uh, I'm trying to think back. It was, yeah, it was Had It All uh, features a guitar solo from him. And one of the things that I really think made me enjoy this more, and I'm not saying this to slight the last album, but if you listen to the last one and then come into Hushed and Grim, it feels like they tried to go the route of becoming this this radio-friendly band, like on Show Yourself. You know, that was their song. It actually hit rock radio when Mastodon never hits rock radio. You know, you have to get into like metal radio and that's even more pigeonholed than uh, than just rock radio in general nowadays. Absolutely. So I think with them taking a step back or multiple steps back at this point, not just from, you know, trying to be something that they're not and then also losing their manager. I think they've found something in that. You know, instead of trying to be this band that you know everybody's going to you know know because of radio and know because they have great singles like and uh, you know I'm not comparing them to them but like Metallica and like the Black Album, you know, they Metallica's career was made on the Black Album and that's when they kind of solidified themselves as a household name and I don't think Mastodon is that band that is going to solidify themselves as a household name on any album through the radio. Mastodon is going to be that that grinder. You know, they're going to grind and they're going to tour and they're going to hit the fans in a way where, you know, they know that they're the fans know that the music is real and the band is real. And just through all of that hard work and some and just great writing based on stuff that they believe in and not toning it down, um, that's how they're going to and have made a name for themselves. You know, and I'll I re- even go as, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I'll go as far as to say, kind of like how I was mentioning, this is their almost, like them almost trying to capture the essence of Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. I'll actually go a step further and say, th- this album helps solidify them as the next rush. And kind of your point being that they are creating music for themselves, that they feel is true to themselves, and garnering a fan base that appreciates mm-hmm. that realness. I think Exactly. Yeah, I think they I mean in a way this really solidifies them as the next big cult following band that is going to they could I, I feel like this album's a game changer and that it really could help them get to that next level of headlining stadiums without any radio play. The um, only th- I, it's getting close. Yeah, the only thing that I fear with this album, with how good it is, is that with so much feeling and meaning behind it that if they ever get to a place where they feel like they're they're kind of over their grief that they don't play as much off of this album as they need to because th- this album to me is the best that Mastodon has sounded in a while and there's a so, lot of there's a lot of albums from Mastodon that I like there's some that I I don't and this is probably my favorite and I'm going to go on record as saying that uh, the song Savage Land is probably my new favorite Mastodon song. There's just something that when that track hits, it feels so good 
so like metal that uh, it's something that I've missed for a long time. So I think I'm less scared about that once they get over their grief, because I think what I loved about, and I kind of touched this in my review in that this album isn't just them moping over a lost one. It's not just them even angry over losing someone. It's literally, it's a journey of them coming into acceptance and realizing to cherish every moment. And it was almost, it's almost like you hear them having a wake up call of going, Oh man, we need to appreciate every moment. I was even reading the bio that they wrote for specifically for this album, how you can tell they were kind of taking things for granted. And in the bio, they were saying how both the loss of Nick John, their manager, and also just the pandemic had pretty much taking their livelihoods away from them for well over a year it made them realize how much they took for granted, how much they took playing in front of a single person for granted, playing together for granted. Uh, and even just, you know, the friendships that they had for granted that, you know, they lost during this whole pandemic. So I would almost argue that what you're listening to is a revitalized Macedon who realized, you know what, we can't take our lives for granted anymore. We need to appreciate what we've had and we need to make those moments matter. We need to make them count. We need to, and I think that's why when I mentioned my review, it's really a beautiful tribute to Nick, John, and that it's them thanking him for everything that they've done and kind of almost in a way making a promise that his sacrifices was not in vain. And to me, that makes me more excited to hear what Mastodon do next because this is a refreshed Mastodon who have regained that hunger. Going back to Gojira, they continue to showcase how hungry they are. And you can make the argument with Mastodon, you know, they kind of lost that hunger. They were still producing good music, but it was definitely a little bit of a struggle for them. Here it's like, no, 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 we're back. We are. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, you kind of get the same vibes from when you first heard Mastodon, when they first broke out on the scene, that hunger that, uh, in Blood Mountain, just that hunger that they had there, you know, to take over the world. I think we have been missing that from Mastodon for a while, as much as I love their music, even you know throughout the years. But I think this album, they regained it and they're back. And that makes me more excited to see where they go from, from here. Yeah, and I wrote in my notes here that it kind of reminded me a lot of early day Mastodon, like for all the reasons that you just said. And one of the things that caught me as soon as we got the, the press packet was the artwork. And the artwork felt very reminiscent of Leviathan, of Crack the Sky, that that style. You know, I don't know the artist's name. I'm not going to pretend to know it, but just that style that you know that this is Mastodon. Like, you know, whenever you see, um, I th think it's Baroness, you know, they have a very unique art style to their, their albums. And if you look at Mastodon and all of their artwork, you know, there are some albums that I was just turned off by just by the artwork themselves. And I think that going back and really, I guess, finding themselves again with this music and putting a cover on the album the way that that they did, you know, with the style that it is, it really says, you know, it's very it's very toned down. It's very you know, not colorful at all by Mastodon standards. They've got some very colorful album covers. It's very like it's it, like they say it's hushed and grim. It's it's very grayscale, black and white. And it by the way, feels... it was Paul Romano who um, did the artwork. Ah, okay. Uh, he did the you know remission, Leviathan, Blood Mountain, Crack the Sky. So I mean, it to your point, it makes sense that kind of recaptures that from their glory days. Right. It recaptures everything about the band and. That's really all that you need to know about this album. The moment you see the cover is that this is old school Mastodon, but the music has got that old school drive to it with new school flair because of everything they've been through. And there's just so much on this album. You say it's a journey and even like I keep saying, I hit the first track and you know that you're going to be on a musical journey. It just feels different. This yeah. album feels, honestly, I'm going to say that this feels like an album that is on the level of what Tool did on their last one, Fear Inoculum. I it, agree. It's it's just different. 
I don't know how they did it. it just or even those ladders. So like, yeah, I mean, even I would even argue to hold their height. Um, yeah, no, I'm. I think we can probably go on and 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 on about how great this album is. But let's be real. We know what really matters here. Two music geeks are going to fight over to see who can give the longest review in under two minutes. So let's find out if either one of us succeeded. Matt, what was my time? Even though I have a really strong hunch, I went over. Well, you should always expect that because this is two minutes to review. And Zach doesn't know how to do two minutes to review. I um, Excuse me. Excuse me. I believe that if you listen to our last episode of Two Minutes to Review, where we reviewed Triviums in the Court of the Dragon, I won that episode and gave a review right underneath two minutes. Thank you. Yes. I'm the reigning champion. Thank you. How how many times have you done that? That's a, that doesn't matter. <laughs> last episode, I won. So what did okay. I do? Uh, yeah, well, um, I hate to take you down a peg, but two minutes, 24 seconds. Oh, yeah, that's long. And well, then congratulations. You came in at one minute and 54 seconds. Mazel that tough. is how you play this game. Mazel tough. Now, did you agree with Matt and I? Do you think this is a nearly perfect album like we did? Or do you think it's missing something? Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Epic Footnote. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can hear more podcasts like this, as well as check out some pretty cool videos. And thank you once again to our sponsor, Rootless Coffee Co. They really produce some amazing coffee. And if you use the code Epic Roast, you can get 50% off your orders. And you can also buy your very own Epic Footnote Roast. You support us. You support some other really great artists. It's a win-win for everyone. And also, don't forget that we've got Lucky 13 Beard Co. They have some great beard bombs and oils, been sponsoring the show for a very long time. And if you've never tried any sort of products where you care about the way you look, you care about the way you smell, I urge you to try these because you're going to feel and smell great. We're giving you 10% off of your orders. Just head on over to Lucky 13, the number beardco.com. Pick anything that you want on their site, put it in the cart, use the code EFB10 at checkout. You get 10% off your order. Like I said, you're going to look great, you're going to smell great, and you might even smell epic in the near future. What a tease. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you join us for another episode real, real soon. See ya. See ya.